Hi, uh, this is my uh, second lecture on uh, multiple linear equation and uh, the content of uh, today, today's lecture is uh, basically uh, hypothesis testing in multiple linear regression. Uh, we will be uh, talking about how to test uh, 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 significance of regression model and uh, test on individual uh, regression coefficient and uh, uh, test for several parameter being 0 uh, using the extra sum of squares method. Uh, this is uh, you know this extra sum of squares method is a, a, is a very uh, important uh, uh, technique in, in regression analysis. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, in the last lecture, uh, we have uh, learned you know how to uh, how to fit a multiple linear regression model. So, uh, given a set of uh, observations uh, on response variable and uh, several uh, regressor variable, uh, you know we know uh, how to uh, estimate the regression coefficients uh, using uh, least square method. Well, so uh, once uh, you have a, a fitted model, uh, the next important uh, um, uh, job is to test the significance of the model. So, by uh, testing the significance of a multiple linear regression model, I mean whether there is uh, linear relationship between uh, the response variable and uh, the regressor variables. Okay. So, it might be the case that uh, all the regressor given a problem you know you, you are given a problem you have one uh, response variable and you have several uh, regressor variables. So, it might be the case that you know uh, uh, all the regressors variable, uh, all the regressor variables are uh, irre irrelevant uh, for the response variable. That means, what I want to mean is that uh, you know none of the uh, regressor variables uh, are um, significant for uh, response variable. Uh, in other word, in other uh, word, I can say that you know uh, none of the uh, regressor variables have uh, contribution uh, to explain the variability in the uh, response variable. Well, so <coughs> uh, basically well, uh, first we will be talking about uh, test for test for significance of a regression model. So, as I told that uh, you know uh, testing uh, sig uh, the significance of regression model it means uh, whether there is a linear relationship between the response and uh, any of the uh, reg regressor variables. Well, uh, so, so uh, this is to test whether if there is linear between the response and any of the regressor 
variables x1, x2, xk minus 1. Well, so uh, this can be uh, tested by testing the hypothesis that uh, uh, h naught which is uh, the null hypothesis by testing this null hypothesis beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta k minus 1 equal to 0 uh, against the alternative hypothesis that uh, beta j is not equal to 0 for at least one j okay so uh, the null hypothesis says that you know there is no linear relationship between the response variable and any of the uh, regressor variable and the alternative hypothesis says that no uh, there is at least one regressor variable uh, which uh, contributes uh, significantly uh, to the model. So, uh, this is the hypothesis we want to test. Well, okay, so, the rejecting the null hypothesis here implies that at least uh, one of the regressor variables x1, x2, x k minus 1 uh, contributes significantly to the model. So, here b j is not equal to 0 means the uh, the regressor variable x j uh, contributes uh, significantly to the model. Well, so uh, to test this hypothesis we will be uh, um, taking the ANOVA approach. Uh, we know that the total sum of square S x t which is equal to S s regression plus S s residual. Okay. Well, now we also know that the S s t has a degree of freedom n minus 1, S s residual has degree of freedom n minus k and S s regression has degree of freedom k minus 1. Well, now uh, S s regression by sigma square this follows chi square distribution with uh, degree of freedom k minus 1 and also we know that S s residual by sigma square this follows chi square n minus k and uh, they are independent. Okay. Then uh, from the definition of F statistics uh, by the definition of F statistics F is equal to S s regression by k minus 1 by S s residual by n minus k. This random variable follows 
f distribution with uh, degree of freedom k minus 1 n minus k right and also uh, it can be uh, of course we know that you know uh, ms residual which is basically uh, ms residual ms residual which is uh, which is SS residual by n minus k, this is an unbiased estimator of sigma square. So, uh, we know that expected value of M s residual is equal to sigma square and also it can be proved that the expected value of this one, this one is nothing but m s regression, expected value of m s mean square regression, this is equal to sigma square plus beta star dashed x c prime x c beta star. by k minus 1 sigma square. So, uh, well just uh, I need to uh, define what is this beta star and uh, beta and x c. Basically, b star is equal to beta 1, beta 2, beta k minus 1. I mean uh, the beta vector was uh, 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 was like beta naught, beta 1, beta 2, beta k minus 1. So, beta star is obtained by excluding beta naught from beta and x c star sorry x c is equal to it, it has also been obtained from uh, the x matrix but this one is uh, x 1 1 minus x bar that is the uh, mean of the observations I mean all the regressor variables and uh, x 1 k minus 1 minus x bar and x n 1 minus x bar x n k minus 1 minus x bar right. So, now uh, look at these two uh, expected value uh, and uh, these two expected values indicates that if the observed value of f is large because see f is nothing but this f is nothing but f is equal to m s regression by m s residual and here is the expected value of m s regression and here is the expected value of m s residual. So, if the observed value of f is large, then there is at least one beta which is not equal to j. So, so the higher value of f indicates that at least at least one beta j is not equal to j. If you know see if all the um, regression coefficients beta j's are equal to 0, then this quantity is going to be 0 and uh, f is uh, going to be equal to 1. So, higher value of this observed value, I mean higher values, higher value of observed f uh, indicates that at least 1 beta j is not equal to 0. 
So, based on this we, we reject H naught that is the null hypothesis that says that beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta k minus 1 equal to 0. We reject this null hypothesis if f value is high, high means I mean f value is greater than f alpha and it has the degree of freedom k minus 1 n minus k. Okay, so, this value you can get from the statistical table. Well, so, now we just uh, summarize the whole thing uh, using the uh, ANOVA table. So, here is the ANOVA table for multiple linear regression. Source of variations. degree of freedom, sum of square, mean square and the f value. Well, uh, so sources of variation it could be the variation due to the variation that is explained by the regression, the variation that is remain unexplained that is SS residual and this is the total variation, the total variation. Okay. Uh, well, uh, the degree of freedom for this one is n minus 1, the degree of freedom for a regression is k minus 1 and residual is n minus k. Right? and uh, this is called SS regression, SS residual, SS t. So, uh, I have explained all these things you know uh, what is SS t, what is SS residual, what is SS regression in the previous lecture. So, MS regression is equal to SS regression by the degree of freedom k minus 1. Similarly, m s residual is equal to uh, s s residual by the degree of freedom n minus k and here you have the f value which is equal to m s regression by m s residual. Okay. And uh, we know that this uh, f follows f distribution with degree of freedom k minus 1 n minus k and uh, we reject uh, H naught if f is greater than I mean the observed f is greater than f tabulated f alpha k minus 1 n minus k. Okay. So, now uh, next uh, I uh, move to the test for test on individual regression coefficients. Uh, once you determine that uh, uh, you know uh, your null hypothesis in the previous test is rejected that means you know there is a, a linear uh, relationship between the uh, response variable and the regressor variable that means the null hypothesis is rejected means there is at least 
one regressor variable which has significant contribution to the uh, to the response variable. So, once the null hypothesis in the previous test is rejected, uh, we know that, that there is at least one regressor which has significant contribution to explain the variability in the response variable. Well, now the next obvious question is which regressor variable has significant contribution. So, we need to test no, uh, we need to test the uh, regressor uh, coefficients individually. So, uh, test for test on individual regression coefficient. Okay, so, this is also it is called that uh, you know uh, it is called partial test partial or marginal test. The previous one is called the global test. Okay, I forgot to mention that. Well, so here you know once you determine that uh, you know at least one of the regressor variable uh, is uh, significant. So, the next question uh, which one is significant? So, uh, we test for this one we test the hypothesis H naught uh, which says that beta j equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis H 1 that is beta j is not equal to 0. So, this basically you know it this one and test uh, this hypothesis test the significance of x j in the presence of other regressor in the model. Okay. So, uh, how to test uh, this hypothesis that beta j equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis that beta j is not equal to 0, uh, uh, we can uh, we can uh, go for you know of course, we know that the, the unbiased estimator we got is beta j which is equal to x prime x inverse uh, x prime y. Well, and we know that this beta hat this follows normal distribution with uh, mean beta and and variance sigma square x prime x inverse. Okay, that is what uh, I proved in the last class. Now, from here uh, we can conclude that you know beta hat beta j hat by sigma square. So, this is the total I mean this is the variance covariance matrix, but here we are only concerned about beta j. So, we will be taking the j j th uh, element here. So, sigma square x prime x inverse you take the just j j th element. So, this one is nothing but well. So, this follows uh, we can say that this follows normal distribution with uh, 
mean 0 and variance sigma square. Now, of course, see sigma square is not known. So, if we if we replace this sigma square by um, ms residual, then this is this variable or this random variable is going to follow uh, t distribution. Well, so the test statistic for this testing is that you know uh, t equal to beta j hat by m s residual x prime x inverse the j j th element of this. This follows t distribution with degree of freedom n minus k of course, this is under under h naught. So, I, I did the mistake here uh, you know this is this does not follow normal 0 1 uh, this minus beta j this follows normal 0 1 and under h naught this beta j is equal to 0. So, under h naught you can say that uh, this random variable follows normal 0 1. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So, H 0 which says that beta j is equal to 0, we reject uh, is rejected if the t value is far from 0, if this t value is greater than t alpha by 2 n minus k. So, uh, this is uh, uh, the critical region to test uh, beta j equal to 0. Uh, so, the first step is that you test uh, whether uh, the fitted model is significant that means, whether there is any linear relationship between the response variable and any of the regressor variable by using the global test that means, the hypothesis we tested at the beginning. Uh, so, if you see that yes there is a significant uh, the test is significant that means, uh, uh, there is significant contribution of at least one regressor, then you go for the partial test. I mean once you know that at least uh, one of the regressor variables has uh, you know uh, significant uh, contribution uh, to the response variable, then you need to determine which regressor has uh, the contribution significant contribution to to determine that you you need to go for the partial test uh, well so uh, next uh, we'll move to we want to test uh, for several parameters being zero okay so this is the technique here is called uh, extra sum of squares method and this one has very important uh, application in a regression analysis. What we want to do here is that uh, we want to test for several parameter being 0. Okay. So, what I want to mean by this is that, uh, well suppose you have uh, uh, multiple linear regression model say y equal to x beta plus epsilon. Here, this beta 
is a k cross 1 vector. Okay. So, it involves uh, beta naught and uh, k minus 1 uh, regressor coefficients. Okay. Now, what you want is that we would like to determine if some subset of R, of course, R is less than k minus 1, k min minus 1 is the total number of regressors. So, if some subset of R regressors contribute significantly to the regression model. Okay. So, what I mean by this one is that suppose you know you have you are given a uh, problem uh, and in that problem there are four uh, regressor variables and one response variable. So, you need to fit a model uh, like uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 plus beta 4 x 4 plus epsilon. And uh, after fitting the model, you know you feel that uh, some of the um, some of the regressor variables are, are not significant. Okay. Uh, maybe you, you, you believe that x 4 and uh, x 3 they are not uh, significant. So, what uh, you want to test is that whether uh, beta 3 and beta 4 is equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis that at least one of them is not equal to 0. So, you want to test uh, the significance of beta 3 and beta 4 or x 3 and x 4, the regressor variable x 3 and x 4 in the presence of uh, x 1 and x 2. So, extra sum of square technique is uh, used to test uh, uh, such uh, you know such uh, for, uh, hypothesis. Uh, let me explain uh, again. Uh, suppose you ha you have one response variable and you have uh, four regressor variable x1, x2, x3 and uh, x4. And uh, you have to fit a model like beta equal y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3 plus beta 4 x4 plus some epsilon. Okay. And uh, you know after fitting the mod, uh, model of this form, you know multiple linear uh, regression model involving four regressors, uh, you believe you know you feel uh, that uh, x3 and x4 they are, or for example maybe any subset x1 and x4 they are not uh, significant. Um, they don't have significant contribution to to explain the variability in y. So, what we, you believe is that you believe that these two uh, say x 3 and x 4 they are irrelevant uh, for the response variable y. Uh, well, so uh, to test this one significant uh, I mean to test uh, this uh, whatever you believe in statistically uh, you need to test the hypothesis like h naught equal to beta 3 beta 4, you want to test that this vector is going to be equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis that uh, sorry beta 3 beta 4 uh, against the alternative hypothesis that beta 3 
beta 4 is not equal to 0, by not equal to 0 means at least one of them is not equal to 0. So, this is what uh, you know we want to uh, test uh, this type of hypothesis can be uh, can be tested using the extra sum of square method. Well, in general I have the model y equal to x beta plus epsilon and uh, my beta is a k cross 1 vector. Now, I want to split this beta into two parts, uh, I mean one is I will call it beta 1, the other one is beta 2. So, this beta 1 is again a vector, you know, it is it has uh, it is a k minus r cross 1 vector and beta 2 is a r cross 1 vector. Okay. And you believe that uh, the last r regressor variables are not significant for y. Okay. Using this partition, uh, similarly we can, par, uh, we can um, divide the matrix x also, x can be also partitioned into uh, x 1, x 2, right. And then you can write this model as x 1 beta 1 plus x 2 beta 2 plus epsilon. Okay. And the hypothesis you want to test is that you think that this is enough, you think that y equal to x 1 beta 1 plus epsilon is enough for y. That means, what I want to mean by this one is that here in fact, I the uh, analog thing is that I am testing beta 2 equal to 0. So, beta 2 is a vector which involves uh, r regression coefficients. Okay. So, against the alternative hypothesis H 1 that y equal to x 1 beta 1 plus x 2 beta 2 plus epsilon, which in other word says that h 1 is that beta 2 is not equal to 0. So, what you claim is that this this restri uh, we call uh, this one you know the restricted model. You feel that this re restricted model or uh, the first k minus r regressors uh, are enough to um, uh, the first k minus r regressors are enough to uh, explain the variability in in y you don't need the last uh, r regressors well uh, and the alternative hypothesis says no uh, the last r regressors uh, are also significant to explain the variability in y so to test uh, this type of hypothesis uh, you know we use uh, uh, the extra sum of square technique. Okay. So, what we do here is that we compute SS regression for 
both the pool and restricted model. Well, so this one is the full model, this involves all the regressors and this is the restricted model which involve uh, only k minus r minus 1 basically, uh, k minus r minus 1 regressors, right. Well, so one thing you have to understand that you know SS residual this one always decreases as the number of regressor variable increases. increases. So, this is a very uh, uh, intuitively of course, it is clear, it says that the SS residual this thing decreases as you increase the number of regressor variables, whether it is you know whether it is the newly added regressor variable is uh, relevant for the a response variable or not, it does not matter. Uh, if you add one more, suppose you have a model with k regressors. So, if you add one more regressor, say if you make k plus one regressor variable in the model, then SS residual decreases. But, uh, you know, if the newly added uh, regressor variable is uh, significant or very relevant for the model, for the response variable, then it decreases more, but if it is not that much relevant for the response variable, then the SS residual decreases less. Well, the same thing, you know, since SS residual plus SS regression is SS total, which is fixed. In other words, I can say that SS regression increases as you increase the number of regressor variables. Okay. So, again the same statement, the SS regression increases more if the newly added regressor variable is relevant to the response variable, otherwise it increases less. Okay. So, this is the you know the basic uh, idea behind the behind the um, uh, extra sum of square technique. Well, let me compute. Let me compute SS regression. SS regression uh, for the full model first. So SS regression full. Okay. We know that the SS regression for the full model means by the full model I mean y equal to x beta plus epsilon. So, it has all the regressors. So, I know that the SS regression for the full model is beta hat prime x prime y minus n y bar square. You can refer the previous lecture for this one and this has degree of freedom k minus 1, right. Of course, you know y bar is nothing but 1 by n summation y i. Okay. And also we know that m s residual for the full model uh, is equal to y prime y, which is yeah, this is basically SS residual uh, y prime y beta hat prime x prime y by the degree of freedom because I wrote m s residual. So, the degree of freedom is n minus k, right. 
this is for the full model. Now, under H naught that is under the restricted model, so restricted model says that y equal to beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon. So, uh, we do not have the last uh, r regressors in this model. So, under this restricted model my S s regression I said restricted. So, this is the notation S s regression under, under the restricted model. Uh, this is going to be beta 1 the same thing just I will replace beta 1 by beta 1 sorry beta hat by beta 1 hat and x by x 1, x 1 dash y minus n y bar square, right. And this has, you know, here you have, you have uh, uh, not k minus 1 regressors, you have k minus 1 minus r regressors in this model, because we have removed uh, R regressors from this model. So, this has this has degree of freedom k minus 1 minus R. Okay. Now, I said that S s regression increases as the number of regressor variable increases. So, that means the S s regression under the full model is greater than the S s regression under the restricted model, because the full model has more regressor variable compared to the restricted model. So, this one you compute uh, S s regression full minus S s regression restricted, you know this is called the extra sum of square due to due to beta 2 given that given that beta 1 is already in the model. So, let me uh, this is very important let me explain it a little bit this I said that this is the extra sum of square due to beta 2 what is beta 2? Beta 2 is the vector, uh, beta we have split it into two parts beta 1 and beta 2. So, beta 2 is the uh, regressor, uh, beta 2 is a r cross 1 vector. So, it beta 2 is associated with the regression, uh, regressor coefficient for those r regressor variables. Okay. So, this one is you know this is the reg S s regression for the full model, S s regression for the restricted model. So, here you have all the regressor variable, here you have the first k minus 1 minus r regressor variable. Okay. So, if you subtract this from here, this becoming this this will give you the extra regression sum of square I should say that extra sum of square is basically uh, the extra regression sum of square due to due to the last k minus 1 minus r regressors. So, if well so I hope you understood. Uh, so, this is called the extra sum of square due to the last k minus 1 minus r regressors given that the first k minus uh, the first uh, 
well sorry so uh, this one is of order r cross 1 and this this one is of order k minus 1 minus r replaces okay so this says that extra sum of square this is the extra sum of square due to uh, due to the last r regressors given that the first k minus 1 minus r regressors are present in the model right now what we can do is that uh, we can compute the degree of freedom of this one and the degree of freedom of this one is uh, degree of freedom is see this has degree of freedom uh, k minus 1 and this has degree of freedom k minus 1 minus r. So, this has degree of freedom r ok this minus this one ok. Now, uh, SS, SS regression for the full model minus SS regression for the restricted model. This is the extra sum of square and this has degree of freedom r, uh, this has degree of freedom r. This by sigma square follows chi square r because this has degree of freedom r and uh, SS residual for the full model by sigma square this follows chi square n minus k and uh, you can check that they are independent. Now, we are in position to compute the F statistic which is equal to uh, SS this extra sum of square SS regression for the full model minus SS regression for the restricted model. You divide this quantity by the degree of freedom r by the definition of F statistics. Okay. This follows chi square r. So, this random variable by r by this random variable by n minus k. So, S is residual full by n minus k you know this thing follows F distribution with degree of freedom r n minus k under H naught. So, intuitively it is very clear that so, this is see the numerator this portion is the uh, extra regression sum of square due to due to the last r regressor variable and if this quantity is more that means, the last uh, r regressors they have significant contribution in SS regression that means, they have significant regression they have significant contribution to explain the variability in y. So, so, intuitively it is very clear that if this quantity is large then we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So, the null hypothesis says that the null hypothesis says that you go for the uh, restricted model, but uh, but al alternative hypothesis says that you go for the full model. Uh, well, so if this quantity is large, then if f is greater than f alpha r n minus k, then we reject H naught and conclude that at least one of the regressors in beta 2 is significant and conclude that that at least one of the regressor in beta 2 is significant. 
So, I hope you understood uh, uh, extra sum of square. This is very interesting and also very important. Uh, well, uh, uh, that is all for today. Thank you very much.